Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Sharbax. Hi. Hi. So uh, this is the big TCL booth here, CS 2020. Welcome in Vegas. You yes. have some really exciting stuff here, huh? Yes, we have some uh, 8K announcement. We have some mini LED announcement and a lot of QLED, QLEDs everywhere based on quantum dots. This is really cool. And a lot of people are checking out your cinema wall. Yeah, that uh, one is micro, micro LED. So this 132 is different inch. from mini LED here. Here, every LED is a pixel. So you have 24 million pixels. You have 24 million LEDs. And this is active, meaning it's not a backlight. Uh, the, there is no filter. What you see here is micro LED. It's an innovation, it's a prototype. Uh, when the technology will be mature, maybe in one, two, three years from now, then we will bring it on the market. Is this the coolest looking micro LED large display in the whole world? This is one of the coolest. You see a lot of micro LED solutions. Uh, Samsung know, is showing something. Oh, exactly the same technology. Same technology. Every brand, every major brand is working on this micro LED technology at the moment. So it's not quite 8K, but it could, it's definitely going to be 8K. It's going to be 8K or by the time, uh, by the time we launch it, it's going to be maybe 12K uh, resolution. What I can tell you is, is we already uh, sold a few pieces, but it, it, we need uh, some maintenance. Yeah? It's very, very, very big. It's very Potentially, big, very bright. You can do any size you want. Yes, and in also really good for the resolution. So you can talk, here we show 132 inch, but we also show in the past 150 inch, so much And uh, basically it's just tiles. You can put them together as many as you want. Yes. And you have small tiles of micro this, LEDs. This prototype is made of small tiles. Yes, but the, the target in the end, is to make this in a factory, so in one piece. So, but here for the prototype, you see small types of micro LEDs. It's easier to maintain and to control. Maintain, yeah. it means sometimes some pixel die and you want to swap out a tile. Because it's heating a lot. And uh, on this prototype, which is heating a lot, you know, 24 hours a day, uh, sometimes, correct, there might be some tiles to replace. It looks really impressive. And uh, really the, cool the border around here is much closer than the Samsung demo. That uh, means you're not scared to let people see it. No, it we, are looks not cool. we are not scared to say it's prototype, it's technology. But in the meantime, we have a very nice one, which is mini LED. And this is the big, big launch for this show. Correct. You, you're claiming to be the first. And the only one. The only one. To so do what? Mini to LED, do mini LED 8K with? or mini LED, mini LED? Both 4K, 8K, and with a quantum dot filter with QLED on top. So what you see here behind me is a 75 inch mini LED first generation. So, so what do you mean first generation? Generation one, which we are actually selling this model. So this model is on the market, 75 inch in the US, 65 inch in Europe. What you have here at the back, 15,000, so 15K, 15,000 really small LEDs. And they, these LEDs are split into zones. We have 800 zones, meaning we can dim and control individually each zone. Great contrast, great brightness. And when the blue LEDs are gonna hit the quantum dot, it's gonna explode into colors. So 800, you say? 800 zones. Uh, Gen 1. First generation one. And generation two, yeah. we improve the concept, of course. It's gonna launch by the end of this year. Yeah. Uh, and then we encapsulate more than 20,000 LEDs in a small sheet of glass. So here you have a sheet of glass. And in this sheet of glass, we encapsulate so many small LEDs, like 20 or 25,000 LEDs. 25,000? Depending, depending on the screen size. You could even have So more. you're going from 800 to 25,000? No, that's the amount of LEDs. Then the LEDs are split into zones. And here we are talking about thousands of zones. Yes, so 1,000, 2,000 zones can control individually also. So same as generation one, much more precise, much more dense. The LEDs are smaller, more powerful, and the pitch, so meaning the gap between each LED, much smaller. So we can refine and control the backlight even better. This is 8K. This is 8K, more than 2000 nits brightness. And here we're not talking about peak brightness, but average brightness on the screens can be 2000. What you don't see actually is 
you have a very good transition between the black and the white. You have no halo effect or almost no halo effect. This one is a prototype, but we're gonna launch it by the end of the year. By end the of the year, of, not before? By the end of 2K20. So, and then uh, we have a generation three. We can talk later. At the press uh, conference, you yes. were. That's called mini LED on glass. <laughs> and at the press conference, we call it Vidrian. <laughs> Vidrian mini LED on glass. Uh, at the press conference, you were kind of uh, teasing Hisense a little bit or somebody else doing uh, dual layer displays. You don't do dual layer, you we only don't do, do mini LED. Correct. You uh, claim it's better, it's brighter. It's brighter, it's. Uh, safer in, from an industrial point of view and it's easier to control together with quantum dots. Uh, of course, I, I cannot comment on Hisense solution. I, they may have a good solution, but we think Mini LED is a much better solution. Uh, but they, they, they claim to have uh, 2 million zones. Yes, because of this double... As a full uh, HD zones. I'm not they sure. They even might do 4K zones eventually. Yeah, I'm not sure how exactly how it works. I need to check out on Hisense. But no Halo, even... It's just just thousands of zones. Just thousands of zones, meaning 2,000 of zones is enough to decrease the halo effect. But on the next generation, we will eliminate the halo effect. What do you mean next generation? Generation 3 of Mini LED. Are you showing for, something? Yes, for 2021 or 2022. So meaning in two years from now. You know, maybe I have to explain, these products are full array local dimming, FALD, full array local dimming meaning the LEDs are placed at the back, it's direct backlight. The challenge here is to make thin products. Generation 1, 2 cm instead of 4 cm. Generation 2 will go slimmer, and here we have the Generation 3, which is less than 5 mm. So if you go on the side, here, this is really direct backlight, so the LEDs are placed at the back in a very thin sheet of glass, and the LEDs are closer to the screen to reduce the thickness, less than 5 mm. What we also put, we put the speakers in a nice soundbar to make the TV even slimmer. So slim is a big trend in the last many years, but I think the most important is brightness, quality. Sorry, I didn't hear. Most important, I would think, is uh, brightness, quality. How is that? Is that also an improvement? In, in terms of picture quality, you have four key things for the human eyes and, 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 and the brain. You have the contrast, which is the difference between the bright and the dark area. Contrast is probably super important, the most important. Number two, you have the color. Uh, the human eyes can, can really see the colors. Number three, you have the sharpness, so the level of detail, the resolution. And number four, you have the motion on moving pictures, how, how it behaves without any judder. So these four factors are really very well managed with direct LED solution or mini LED solution. Contrast is really much improved. HDR effect is there. You have all the details on the bright and the dark zones. And, and the last thing to improve is really on the thickness. Huh? And you really, really here you see, you will have much more zones. We are talking about 300K zones. 300,000 zones. Yes. And the challenge now on this it's kind of very thin TV, it's heating. It's heating a lot. It's becoming warm. You don't, you so don't dare back, touching it. It gets hot. Well, you can touch it. No, no, no yeah. problem. I got but, static electricity. I can't touch. Okay, but at the yeah. back, we put a lot of vents to uh, to avoid to, to make the heat escaping at the back. The so vents you, and the thinness. yeah, you see a lot of you see. Or I'm not sure if you can see that at the camera. You see a lot of holes at the back here. This is really for the heat to come out. Nice. And the nice thing, even in a very slim TV, now we can put the electronics. So all the chassis, what we call the printed circuit board, is still at the back. Uh, so when you plug your HDMI and so on, very convenient. So um, how does it work, this uh, mini? It's kind of nearly micro LED because you have 300K of them. It's a lot. But mini LED on glass, it's how not, is the technology of that, doing that? It's not, it's not yet, it's not micro LED. Again, if you, if you look at an 8K TV, 8K TV, you have 33 million pixels. It's only 300,000. And, and here, you don't have one LED per pixel. Yeah, it's still a backlight. It's 100 times less. Yes. But it's getting closer. You could say that. But the result is not that far away. Uh, 
the, the result is not really not that far away from a micro LED. The most important is for the consumer and for the user, do they see a difference or they don't? In terms of contrast, brightness, color, perception, on QLED powered by mini LED, they see a big difference. They even see sometimes a real, uh, how to say, benefit versus OLED. So yes, the QLED powered by mini LED, you really see a big difference. You have so many zones and so many brightness and colors. So here, what we are also Let's check showing. the difference between OLED yeah, and your well, mini LED. Yes. So you're much brighter, basically, no? On the left, Is that what you would say? Yes, on the left, you see a much brighter and more, much more detailed picture. When you look at the bright zones, the white zones, or the black zones, you probably more see, see more details here. You see more details in the hairs, on the skin, because the HDR is better managed. Of course, OLED... You're not OLED cheating with their demo? No, no cheat, no, no. Of course, OLED is really good. O it's OLED, great. OLED but is you, great. You have more brightness. Is, uh, what's That's, the nits? Uh, here, we, are, we talk about... 1,200. Here, this is mini LED. First generation, huh? generation one on the market, 1,500 nits. Second generation, 2,000 nits. Third generation, no limit. No limit. No, we will go high. We and this control. one is capped at five to 700 nits. Yes, kind of. A traditional 55 uh, display, OLED display is. A, they is don't have peak. a system to go brighter. No, it's not possible. The technology you break the OLED. Not, yes. But the black level are really good. So now you see, you see, or you don't see, but HDR effect might be difficult with the camera to perceive. On the left, I don't film HDR. More details on the skin and more 3D HDR effect. You see here, all the details are kind of lost sometimes. All right. So out of box settings, uh, dynamic picture on both. You see that mini LED is really quite Last good. year, uh, your colleague, uh, American guy, uh, we were talking about the AI. Yeah. And I wonder if it was an error. Uh, he was talking about um, uh, that you have some kind of AI that's like much more efficient H.265 to compress video to like a tiny bit rate. Yes. Is that real? Yes. Uh, it's, it's a real... Okay, this one is a technology demo. So the, the one you are referring to is not this demonstration, it's another demonstration. Yeah. Um, it will land in 2K20 this year on the range, on, uh, on high-end TVs. That one is also really interesting. You have a library, a library of pictures in the TV and on the cloud. So to compare with, and what you can see here, the, the TV recognize this is tree, this is leaf, there is brown. So, so it optimizes that, for that? Yeah, the color saturation is increasing on the brown and the red and increasing on the blue because it detects some water. But the color saturation is okay on the green. So it keeps it adjusting keeps the settings. It keeps adjusting the settings by picture recognition, by scene recognition, will uh, autom in, let's say implement the right settings. So Same the, for audio quality. The codec thing is real, and 2020, what does that mean? Does that mean you're going to enable uh, this, this is new real systems so for high quality 4K streaming and lower bitrate, or what does it mean? No, the no. other thing I'm talking about. I mean the, um, the, oh, codec the other thing. thing. The first thing? Codec. Yes, the codec, the codec compression is yeah. going to happen at the end of this year. So what is it going to enable? Like, uh, does that mean you're going to enable better quality oh, 4K benefit, streaming? The benefit for consumers is when you, when you stream some let's say low-end YouTube content with a lot of macro blocks, for example, you will have less of these visible macro blocks on the screen. Uh, so you will see less of macro block issues, less, less pixelization on, uh, let's say, normal, standard or low-end content. But this is, is it a the, new the codec developed by clean. TCL? Sorry, it's again? a new codec developed by TCL? No, it's an improvement. It's an improvement of an existing codec. It's better than AV1, it's better than H.266. You could say it's, it's the same, it's comparable, but the, let's say the effect on screen is better. Yes. Nice. So maybe you contribute all this to like YouTube and Netflix so they can uh, better compress their, their content. Yes, maybe. because not everyone has 8K YouTube or 8K Netflix yeah. not yet on the market. What's happening here? Uh, here we have a 100 inch TV with a great sound. Uh, it's 4,000 nits. Yeah, that TV we sell in China, uh, at the TCL brand of course. Very, very bright. Very bright, 
Dolby Vision Atmos, uh, but the most impressive part is also the sound, what you cannot hear here. But you see on the left and the right, behind you, on the side, you have the, these tall boys, um, and you have a subwoofer here in the middle, giving a great, great sound. So at TCL, you, <coughs> you don't only want to do soundbar stuff, which a lot of people are doing. It's nice to have real surround sound, uh, yeah. real speakers yes. to say. Not just yes. little things that you put under the TV. We well, want to have real speakers we for do the both. experience, We no? do both. We often, uh, below the TV, we often uh, include a soundbar. We integrate a soundbar. Sometimes we integrate it in a flush way or in a more prominent way, like what you see here. And we also sell individual soundbars, of course. Is that your screen? What's this? No, that's No, no, better. that's, that's okay. not, that's not from else. TCL. It's, okay. um, it's another friendly company over there. I think it's from there. the CS. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sure. sorry. And uh, the next big news, huh? we discussed 8K, we discussed yeah. mini-LED. The, the other big news is quantum dot TVs, QLED TVs. But all of those that you've shown until now, are they all quantum data now? Yes, but I was showing 8K, I was showing mini-LED. So uh, let's say very good, innovative, the best picture quality, let's say. Here, what we have is more affordable quantum dot TVs. So these quantum dot TVs, are with, they come with 100 Hz. So they are really good quantum dot. 100 or 120 for the US, no? Yeah, 120 in the US, 100 in Europe. And uh, this is 75 inch. It's 75, 65 and 55. We have three screen sizes and it's kind of QLED plus, let's say, uh, because 100 hertz, 100% color volume, very bright screens. On the other side, we have even more affordable QLED TVs. No 100 hertz, 50 hertz, very slim, what you can see here is probably one of the most competitive QLED TV range on the market when we launch it in April and May. 82 inch, 65. 82 for the US and in Europe we will have a 75, a 65, a 55 and a 50. Most probably, still under discussion, three size for Europe, 50, 55, 65. We are also targeting, you know, more affordable prices on these kind of QLED models. So, so it's a really talking. It's really good QLED, really good QLED quality, very good co with a lot of innovation inside, hands-free, we, we can talk more, Android and so on. But this kind of TV will target the price of a normal TV. So almost QLED for free. <coughs> uh, we will see how the market is moving, but we are preparing, I'll say, our mission is to democratize the technology to make quantum dot affordable so that everyone can afford the quantum dot. So 65 year. inch quantum dot for 499. No, how what much? What did you say again? 499, 65 inch quantum dot. Way cheaper. Cheaper? No, 1499 you said or 499? 499. No, no, 50, 55, 55, 4599. Four, Okay. Depending on the competition, again. Yeah, 65 is a little bit more. It depends when the market will be. And, and below 1,000. 65 might be or will be below 1,000, we think. Yes. 799. We don't know yet, to be honest. We really don't know yet. We, look, we are in January. We're going to introduce this range in April, May. Uh, many things can change before the Euro Cup. Uh, you know that the market price are really aggressive we will be there at the right level of price. Uh, this is our mission in TCL. We will never make super high quantum dot. Brightness we, we, is good on those cheap ones. But again, uh, those cheap ones are really good quality. Is it 1,000 nits or no? It's, it's 800. 800. 800 nits, so very good brightness. 100% color volume because it's quantum dot, yeah. Why can't we get the big ones in Europe? Why do you just sell them to the Americans? The market. Because uh, the market we also love big. Isn't here, it? here it doesn't look big, but in your in your flat, in my flat, uh, or it's too big. In your castle, in your big home, maybe good enough, but not There's so not many castles. people. All the castles are in Europe. <laughs> no. There's no castles in the US. That's only a few customers. That's not enough. Uh, we need we need more and bigger homes in Europe. In USA, everyone can accept this. No, to be honest, even in USA. This 82 inch might be uh, still overkill for, for next year. So but, the uh, year after, 2021. You, can you estimate around how much would the 82 inch the quantum dot be for the US? How much is the price? Is it 1499? 
I cannot comment at all. I, I, I have no clue here in the US. It's Americans who deal yeah, with that. Yeah, because it's Americans. We have to ask our So you American don't have colleagues. space in the, in the containers, shipping containers. When you go to Europe, there's no space for the big one. No, that's right not now. a big deal. But I advise, we talk to Bruce later for yeah. the USA range. You can easily talk to Bruce. <laughs> all right, we can, we can catch up with him later. Uh, how about, uh, how about here, range. these? No, <laughs> so for uh, Europe, how about you, these? How about these? This one? So this one, they come Price with, around. for Europe, they come with Android 9, compatible Android 10, 11. Uh, they also come, very interesting here, what you can see, they come with a soundbar. In the soundbar, we include a microphone. We call it nice. hands-free voice control. So now you can say, hey Google, to wake up your TV and change channel, open Netflix. You don't need your remote control or your smartphone anymore. You and you can speak Alexa with it also. If you prefer to speak Alexa, you can do it also. Both Alexa compatible and uh, Google uh, Assistant compatible. You can even speak both at the same time. No, hey Google, what time is it? Hey Alexa, record the TV oh, show. You, you can do that because they have different skills. Uh, Alexa skills and uh, Google Assistant skills are quite different. Uh, and of course, you can use both. The only difference is when you use a Google Assistant, then you talk directly to the TV. You say, hey Google, or you can use your remote control. If you use the Alexa, the work with Alexa, you still have to plug an Echo Dot to it. So you plug it, and then you can say, hey, uh, no, no, hey Google, you say, Alexa, change channel. Alexa, open Netflix. So uh, I'm not to say anything bad about Roku. Roku is great and stuff. But oh, uh, sometimes you do US. Roku in the US. So just but in, now, in Europe, talking... we get Android. Yes, in Europe, which is great. Android is really big, really useful. This is probably the best OS so far that we can have here in Europe. Uh, how to say? Android system, Android TV, is very much evolutive. You have updates and you have upgrades. But uh, this is the biggest amount of applications you can dream. You have the Amazon Prime, you have the Netflix, you have all the latest applications on Android and, TV. Uh, Google has done a, uh, Google so has done a good job in the last year, a couple of years, to improve the Android TV experience. I think you are raising a valid point. At the, at the really beginning, if, I, if, I, if we go four or five years back, it was the first time we launched Android TV. Let's say all the brands launched Android TV 5, was not ready. Android 6 was well, quite slow, but from Android 7 and 8, you see a lot of improvements. The operating system has improved so much between Android 5, 6 and then 7, 8. It's really optimized for TV. At the beginning, what, what, what the makers, TV makers were doing, they were just porting Android mobile phone into a TV, which didn't work that well. But that was Android 5 and 6. Later, we developed specific Android TV versions, 7, 8, and 9. And this is really working fast and really good at the moment. And, and you see the sales of Android TV raising up in Europe. Consumers are happy. Yeah, really happy. We have really good feedback on that. Uh, nice. Because you find all your applications, you have many useful uh, features like, you know, the Google Home, you can control your curtains, uh, your coffee machine, your fridge via Google Home. Um, you can enjoy games, uh, you have 4K uh, HDR on Netflix, uh, Dolby Vision on Netflix, HDR 10 Plus on Amazon Prime, so many applications and games compared to other systems. Because uh, we go here, Tell me, sir. Uh, TCL is doing lots of uh, smart home things, no? Correct. There's, uh, you can connect the lights, you can connect the uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh, humidifier, the air, air purifier. Yeah, so what we are showing here is a connected, is a connected home uh, with, with some fun stuff, uh, detection. We can train nice. uh, Jim, if you like. <laughs> it's very cool. It's very cool. It's so, just an app on Android TV. It's just an app, this, right? Uh, it's an app, and sometimes it's a chipset, which we include in, uh, in all these devices, in all these TCL devices. You have a small chipset so that they can intercommunicate as an ecosystem. And uh, here, this is even the whole uh, TCL kitchen with a smart, um, the, uh, what do you call it, the hub? The thing there, a smart a fridge. Smart fridge over there. Smart fridge, uh, smart cooking, smart yes. doors, smart, smart curtains, smart lamps. TCL is a market leader in China for these smart doors. The smart Selling lock. any in Europe, maybe? It's called the smart lock. Um, only in China at the moment. 
We are considering Europe, no? We are discussing with customers to introduce this in Europe, nice. but we don't have any agreement yet. Uh, this could be a smart mirror in front of the bathroom and the, s the air, air condition. conditioning system. Um, and over there, you have also a part of the smart room where you can control, you know, the lamps or the uh, popcorn uh, coffee machine via the Google Home system. Nice. So I did another video in Shenzhen. Uh, people can uh, check you already it out. Made this, uh, with all the AI. And yes. uh, if you don't mind, we can go walk sure. around we over here. Over there. You have a strange, this is a, a very really cute fun. dog. What is this about? Uh, this is about, you know, when you, when you look at younger generations today, <laughs> when, they f when they snap or when they do some Facebook Messenger and so on, they very often use uh, the portrait or the landscape mode, yeah, both. Uh, this TV will react to your content on your mobile phone automatically. So nice. if you shake, if you shake your mobile phone, for example, how do you make it turn? I will ask the lady if she's here. Do you have the mobile for the demo? All we right. can have a short demo here, I think. Let's, let's the other one. I can show you on the other screen. Ah, on let's the other go screen. Together. Let's go there. Yes. Yeah. So then uh, the the phone is paired with your the phone TV. is paired with the TV, and then some kind of shake. So here you shake on the phone and then it, the There's TV a motor turns. turning the TV. And you see a very nice uh, the sound bar there. in the back. We, you have yeah. a very good sound also. Nice. And then you have the Android AI right there. And you can shake it back to puppy upright mode. Yes. And there is also a possibility that when you, when you change from portrait to landscape, the TV will also change the format automatically. Nice. Uh, then we keep keep going around. Yep. This is the whole uh, big push by TCL to launch smartphones, so launch uh, phones earphones. Are also the new coming with smart speakers. This is really fun. Uh, TCL earphones. T t fun TCL earphones, full of colors. Uh, we call them Intra, and we spent a lot of time on this part here because this part should be really gentle to the inside of your here. The weight. So the weight, this part, should be on the outside of your ear. Because the human ear, my human ear, your human ear, is not prepared to support any weight on the inside. Nice. So we spend a lot of time to optimize the shape here, so that when you put it in your ear, really, the weight is supported by the outside and not by the inside. So with TCL, people are not going to get very, strange ears out of using these kind of things. No, it's very which going to happen with Apple and that all the one other ones. Is ca I, can, I, I can't say I'm Apple, joking a little bit. But that one yeah. is really comfortable. Well engineered. Um, these kind of uh, headphones are really uh, great. You have two range of, uh, of product. This one will be like uh, introduced in March, April in Europe, around 79 uh, euros. So very good. And you but gave one to every media at your press conference. No, we're I've not buying medias, my friend. We are. You gave one, but for testing, yes. For testing, for yeah. Testing. So I have, I have one. I'm going to review it very soon. So we're seventy-nine test out the euros. Quality. I think you got them at the press conference, and we got also the sports mode over there. The sports one, sorry. This one is going to be like more ninety-nine euro in Europe. Um, it comes uh, with the charger, of course. You have very good autonomy. Yeah. It's splash proof, sweat proof. Um, and, and the quality hopefully is great. The sound quality you're gonna you're gonna tell us yeah. very soon, I guess. I'm starting to testing but already. You will hear it. Nice, the battery life is good, long and everything. And then uh, uh, talking about sound, sound quality. Yeah. We have the best sound bar of the show. Already? Yes. Here. This is uh, considered already at IFA. We got five awards. Best soundbar of IFA. Again, here in Vegas. This is the best soundbar of the show. Maybe you can decrease a little bit. Can you decrease a little bit? No. What is really nice in this soundbar here is that we have deflectors. So, most of the soundbars are doing virtualization. You know, it's an algorithm to do Atmos left right virtualization. Here, this soundbar is not virtual. This is a mechanical. Uh, principle with deflectors the sound flow you can feel the sound flow going on the left going on the right to the wall 
and reflecting. To do better surround kind of effects without yes, surround. Because when you hear the when you send the flow, when I talk to you like this, you understand me. If I talk to you like this, or if I talk to you like this, then you don't understand me anymore. So it's a basic principle, but that's the only soundbar in the world doing this. Deflectors. The, the flow is standing there. Of course, in the middle, you still have middle speakers for the clarity, for the voice, and for the dialogue. This is this going to be affordable? This is called Radence. This is TCL Radence, affordable, less than 400 euro, probably 399, launching in Q1, so March, April. Nice. Bracket. Let's really check nice. some of the phones, even though it's not your segment. Right. But let's go over there uh, because uh, TCL what? is big, going big time on the phones. Yeah, we have announced. Um, oh. So six months ago in Europe uh, at IFA, well, sorry, less than six months ago, in September, we announced the Plex. Uh, launched the Plex in Germany, Spain, and now we are launching uh, in USA, here in USA. This is TCL Plex. So really good uh, picture quality and camera. Uh, is it called Plex or is it a different name now? Uh, a different that's name. a good question. We are yeah. thinking maybe to use a different name. Yes. Yeah. Um, so you have one with a little dot in the corner. Yeah. And it's, it's a high the, quality build. It's, it's nice. called a notch. It's TCL quality display, right? Yes, it's TCL display and we use what we call the chipset called Next Vision. This is all the experience we have in TV in terms of HDR. We bring it to the mobile. So that mobile has a, has a HDR quality. On, on the display. But the price is uh, half of an iPhone, or maybe less. It's like a good even, price, I no? Think, I, think, I think it's even, yeah, depends which iPhone you yeah. take, but of course it's TCL and it's affordable technology. And um, well, that, any chance that to that try the, more, the you see more flout? In Barcelona? You're uh, talking about a foldable phone. Any chance you might have one you're showing to people? Uh, you, if, Real you, one? if you come in Barcelona at the Mobile yeah. World Congress, you will, you, we will reveal and we will announce much more details on this foldable phone. So it's going to be a cool foldable phone. Hopefully it's not going to cost $2,500 like Huawei or oh, Samsung. Or Samsung. Maybe more affordable. You hopefully. know us. You know us. But you the quality is doing. hopefully good. Uh, the quality is going to be under control. It comes also from our uh, display factories. So th the power of TCL is that we are not only doing the hardware and, and, and the software, but the, the main power of TCL is that we are using our own displays. So we control what we buy, we control what we do, because we control the display. We are vertically integrated from display until the product. Not many companies are like this in the world. Only three in the world. Only three electronic companies in the world are vertically integrated. Two are Korean. You know Samsung them. and LG. Yeah, and one Chinese, TCL. And all the other brands in the whole world have to buy. They buy from a different supplier. Yes, from five, six different. It could be BOE, for could example, be who BOE, doesn't make their own brand. Could be TCL, uh, CSOT factories. So you ship to other companies too? Yes, we, we ship displays to any company, any competitor. Uh, you know, in this industry, we share, we share displays sometimes. Uh, but in TCL, we mostly use our own displays because we really want to control the quality, the technology, innovation, and, and ultimately have an affordable uh, price over there. Thanks a lot for making these, these amazing displays because uh, it's great uh, to, there's seven billion people in the world and everybody enjoys displays and it's nice that somebody is thinking about doing them affordable. Right, uh, not just. And good um, quality. I'm not going to complain too much about some of the Korean displays, but sometimes they're very expensive. I mean, they also have different SKUs for all these different markets. Yes. yes. But uh, affordable is great, so everybody can afford a nice AK QLED. Not soon. only affordable, really good quality also. Good quality. Yes, at an affordable price. That's so you're going to be number one eventually. You're sometimes you are number one. We have some countries where we are really number one or two. Example USA. Um, also in France, we are number three uh, in TV on the market yeah. because we have a TCL and Thomson brand, for example. So we are the number three TV uh, seller. So you are, we have some countries where when we invest, really, uh, you see the sales really growing fast. So China is one of these, uh, USA is a key country. In Europe, you have France, Germany, UK, where TCL is growing constantly, yes, and quite fast. Faster than the market, at least.